Bowman here from BW1.com. We're going to do an OS tour of the Nook tablet. The Nook tablet runs um, Android 2.3 Gingerbread, and it has a heavily customized um, sort of Nook UI over on top of it, so you can't even really recognize that it's even Android. As you swipe through, there is three um, panels, as they call them, to choose from, and you can pretty much drop anything you want to on these panels, and also can change the wallpaper as you want to as well too. We're just tapping down, choosing change wallpaper, and they have some preloaded ones in there for you, and anything that you've uploaded in on your uh, onto the um, onto the Nook tablet itself, you can choose as a wallpaper as well. So we'll um, choose the basketball court here, and get a preview of it, and we'll set it. A couple seconds later the wallpaper will change. So it's not an instantaneous change, so it does take a little bit of time. You can also um, pretty much put anything you want on here. Right here at the uh, bottom here, so you recently used up applications and books, and all you have to do is tap and drag, and you can drag it right there to desktop. And you can do the same thing here with the um, applications, and if you wanna move them around, you can move them around as such. You can also resize them by sort of doing the pinch to zoom motion like that, so you can make them that big, or you can make them small, however you wanna. Do that and you can just do the same thing for applications as well too. And just to remove them, you just hold it and hit remove from home. And you can remove from home just like that. Relatively easy there. Right here at the top, you have the book that you're reading. So you tap on that, you can go right to the book, hitting the Nook end button here. And you will bring up this quick access menu for home, library, shop, search, apps, web, and settings. We'll hit home here to come back. Then if you tap this corner here, the more, it gives you some more books that you have, movies and TV shows that are recommended based based upon if you have Netflix and you can see more pics as well too. And if you tap here on, on the near this area where the clock is, it'll bring up your quick settings for you know Wi-Fi, battery, brightness, auto rotation, mute, and stuff like that as well. And down here at the bottom is sort of where you kind of your multitasking works. So if you have a couple apps running, you'll see a little icon for that particular app right here. So you can see the little book. If I tap on that, it brings the book back up right here. And going through books is as you would expect on, on the Nook, just swiping left and right there. And this is a preview, so you can hit buy now and that'll bring that up. That'll bring that up here so you can buy, you can read the sample, manage, share, you can see the reviews and stuff as well too of the book you can like via Facebook if you want to. And um, let's, let's go right into the book here. Let's say I want to look up some information. I can do it by, I can do uh, content search like that. You can go through notes and highlights, bookmarks as you want to through the book. You can also uh, go to find to search for specific things. You can share. Um, you can share this as well too. You can recommend it, rate and review, post reading status. You can change the text as well. You can see you have different options for text there. And you can also change the brightness and you can also discover. Discover allows you to basically see what other books are related to it based upon what you're reading right now. Go back here and you can kind of drag around to different parts of the book if you want to just by changing the slider there of that little nook corner there for your bookmarks. You can hit a bookmark a specific page right there. We'll hit go back here and we'll go back here to home. We'll check out the library. As you can see here, this pretty much contains all your content. Um, this is your app library here, your books here, magazines if you decide to download any, newspapers. Um, apps like I showed you, kids stuff, specific stuff, then my stuff, your, your own shelves of content, your files that you've uploaded on the here. We don't really have anything on here right now, but it's just pretty much a file manager. Let's go through, go through that way. Lend me, you can have, you know, you can lend books within the Nook system as well too. We'll hit shop here and this will open up the Nook store of course for games, apps, and uh, different newspapers, magazines, books, and things of that nature. If you go to search, you can search for content. It brings up the on-screen keyboard. It's a little small, but you can search the Nook. Uh, I'm not sure what I have on here. We can search for a sample, maybe. Search Wikipedia. You see sample survey. Search the web. Uh, you can see uh, Nook. And it'll probably bring up the Nook guide, Nook start guide. So search the device and the web as well, too. You can see how the results are kind of laid out there. And if down here, right, right here, you can actually get the quick access to your books just by opening that. Newsstands gives you a quick look into that. Movies and TV shows based on the media that you have installed on here, any media that you downloaded, because you do have 16 gigabytes on here, but uh, a good amount of that is only available to Barnes and Noble specific content. One gigabyte is available for sideloading your own content on it, and then there is a 
micro SD card to add more content of your own to it as well too. But you also have Hulu and Netflix and you have these other apps like Showtime, Ustream, and you can see there, it recommends. And I'm back here. Music, the same thing, your music player or Pandora. We'll X out of there and then the app so it brings that up real quickly and you can browse more. Okay, let's take a quick look here at the browser. Uh, we'll head over to bw1.com. I had a couple of issues with the browser not loading at times, but um, check out here as it loads up. It loads up to our mobile page. You can see it brings up the mobile aspect. We'll turn the mobile page off here and do a quick refresh. As I can, let me see if I can refresh it here. Do a quick, uh, I'll just go back to it like that. There you go. Loads it up there. You can see our main website. Pretty cool. And the Pinterest Zoom works pretty well. You can see it's pretty responsive. The pages generally load up pretty quickly as well, too. You have the menu option here for refreshes right there. You have more options to choose from. And you have bookmarks windows. And when I open up a new window, for some reason I can't figure out a way to get back to the old one once it's been open unless I hit the back button there. Which sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it just brings you back to here, sometimes it actually goes back to the old window. I'm not exactly sure how well this browser really is with that. Let's go to ESPN.com, check out some flash content. Probably a little bit load up the mobile page first. Nope, I loaded up the full page, that's good. As you can see there, we know this is flash here, the flash element here, flash element over there. It loads it up pretty well for the most part and the flash content plays. Obviously it slows the browser down just a bit in doing that and we'll go ahead and rotate this like that so you can see how it looks in this mode as well too. And it's responsive, it's a little slow because of the flash but more or less it's, it's, it's a responsive browser. You can get to your content pretty nicely there. And you have flash support which is nice even though flash is going to be going away in mobile devices pretty soon. All right, so that's pretty much it sort of, sort of for the tour here of uh, the Nook UI, I would like to call it here. It's a simple UI, most people are going to be able to get around and navigate around with it. I think it's a little bit, um, can be a little bit, of, maybe a little overcomplicated for some people, not as simple as it should be. I think there are some some things that are not as obvious as they should be with it. I think, you know, it's nice that they skin and written around it to make it real easy for the basic user, but I don't think it's the easiest of users. I still think the Kindle Fire has a little bit easier of an interface with it, but um, overall, it's nice. It can be a little sluggish at times, but it's nice. And for most people, the average consumer, especially consumers, are going to pick this up. This, this, this UI is definitely going to work for them. So this is Bowman here from BW1.com reminding you, subscribe to our YouTube page. Follow us on Twitter, become a fan of our Facebook fan page. Also, circle us on Google+, subscribe to our RSS feed. Check out our main website, the link to that, and all the social media, all that mouthful I just said, is in the description. And always remember to live your tech world in high definition.